Okay, so hi everyone. I'm uh, Ercilia Guarini from Barbie University, and today I'm going to present you uh, the title Production of Action Like Particles from Photon Conversions in Large Scale Current Magnetic Fields. So, first, it's uh, important to introduce the uh, two photon scuppling action Lagrangian, which reads LA gamma equal to minus one over four G gamma A F tilde F, where G gamma is the ALP photon coupling, A is the ALP, uh, ALP field, F is the electromagnetic field, and F tilde is its dual. Here we are considering two kinds of photons, one which is generated by the charged plasma, and the other which is instead the thermal photon. Now, this Lagrangian allows for two different photon ALP conversion processes, namely the Primogov effect, uh, which basically consists in photon ALP transition in external static electric or magnetic field, and uh, production in solar magnetic fields, which can provide a large current transition rate over the solar interior. In this work, we are mainly interested in the second ALP production process, so ALP production through photon conversions in solar magnetic fields. Now, as you know, the most studied uh, all production process in literature is the Primakov one. And here we basically summarize the most relevant results concerning the solar ALP flux from Primakov production. In particular, we compute the spectrum using a coupling uh, equal to 5 times 10 to the minus 11 GeV to the minus 1. And the spectrum exhibits a typical ALP, uh, average ALP energy of 4.5 keV and a typical solar ALP luminosity of approximately 10 to the minus three G10 squared times the solar luminosity. Now, the Primakov flux has been studied at a CAS experiment at CERN, and uh, uh, the CAS is a third generation helioscope. In general, helioscopes consist in a long cavity filled with a strong magnetic field so that ALPs coming at Earth can be converted back into a beam of photons and in the cavity, and then they can be detected at one of the X-ray detectors so placed at each end of the cavity. Uh, CAS sets the best bound for MA, less than 0.02 EV, G gamma less than 0.66 times 10 to the minus 10 GeV to the minus one. But as I said before, in this work, we are interested in our uh, different process, all production process, and in particular, all production through photons conversions uh, in the solar magnetic fields. Now, actually, these fields are not considered in the standard solar models. Uh, uh, on the contrary, large scale current magnetic fields in the sun are predicted by the so-called seismic solar models. And these fields are basically generated by the electric currents in the solar plasma. The seismic solar models predict the presence of a strong magnetic field into three different regions of the sun interior, namely the radiative zone for air 0.7 or sun, the taco line, so for air approximately 0.7 or sun, and the convective zone for air larger than 0.9 or sun. Here we show a simulation of the magnetic field profiles, which are provided by the seismic solar models, using the upper and lower bound of the magnetic field amplitude in each region of the sun interior. So, Due to the presence of these strong fields in the sun, ALPs can be produced here also through photon conversions in these large scale current magnetic fields. It's first important to stress that when a photon propagates into the solar plasma, it acquires an effective mass. And this mass is basically equal to the plasma frequency omega p square uh, of the sun. Uh, thus, it acquires a third polarization state, namely the longitudinal mode. Thus, in the sun, we can have both photon transverse modes and photon longitudinal modes. Concerning the transverse photons that uh, we will denote with the TP, the TP ALP conversion probability after the beam has traveled the distance set in the magnetic field has this expression, and it has an oscillatory behavior. Uh, here we have introduced some oscillation parameters, namely the gamma T, which is defined in terms of the transverse component of the magnetic field, Pt. Uh, delta P, which is instead defined in terms of the plasma frequency, omega P squared, and uh, uh, delta A, which is uh, defined in terms of the ALP mass MA. In the same way, we can uh, compute the um, uh, LP, uh, ALP conversion probability, where we have denoting with the LP, the longitudinal photons, 
And again, it has an oxidatory behavior, but here we have introduced the oxidation parameters, delta gamma L, defined in terms of the longitudinal component of the magnetic field BL. Now, both the TP ALP and LP ALP conversion probability has an oxidatory behavior because of the presence in their expression of a term in the form sin squared x over x squared. And uh, uh, in particular, these probabilities uh, become maximal uh, when this term is equal to one. And here we say that a resonance occurs. Uh, now, uh, this is important because it says that uh, uh, the out production process for photon conversions in the solar magnetic fields uh, is a resonant process. Now, concerning the TP out conversions, uh, the resonance occurs uh, for omega P equal to MA. Uh, while concerning the LP alp conversions, the resonance occurs for omega p equal to omega a, where with omega a we are denoting the alp energy. And here we show a graphical representation of the oxidation parameters for TP alp conversions. And in particular, uh, we show uh, resonances for two different alp masses, uh, namely for MA equal to 100 dB, which corresponds to resonant conversion in the radiative zone of the sun, and for MA equal to 10 dB, uh, which corresponds instead to resonant conversion in the tacocline line of the sun. We don't show resonant, uh, the resonance in the, the, in the upper layer, so in the convective zone, uh, just because this is, the production in this case is basically completely negligible with respect to the other ones. Um, now, what happens is that uh, while photon propagate, photons propagate into the solar plasma, they are continuously emitted and reabsorbed. Thus, we have to take into account simultaneously photon absorption and photon up mixing. Uh, and if we denote with gamma ups the absorption rate of photons in the solar plasma, we can denote a total photon collision rate, gamma, which is related to gamma ups uh, uh, from this relation. Okay, I don't know. Okay, sorry. Um, and now, since we have to take into account both the um, photon absorption and photon alp mixing, the best approach to deal with the problem is a kinetic one, which is actually really similar to the one used with the neutrinos. So if we denote with the uh, rho, the density matrix, uh, of the photon ensemble, we can write down the Liouville equations. Now, this Liouville equation has a really interesting structures because if you look at the right hand side term, uh, here we have a commutator, which basically describes the dynamic of the problem. And in particular, this describes the axion photon mixing. And uh, a second part, uh, okay, so the, this dynamic is described by a term which depends on omega of TL, so the Hamiltonian for transverse and longitudinal photons, respectively. And then there is a second part in the Liouville equation, which instead depends on two anticommutators. And these are, uh, anticommutators describe dissipative phenomena. So we are talking about photon collisions. Now, photon collisions can be basically of two kind because in the solar plasma, photons can be both produced and absorbed. Now, production is described through this G prod, which is uh, uh, defined in terms of uh, the photons production rate, gamma prod. And uh, um, absorption is instead described from G ups, which is defined in terms of the photon absorption rate gamma ups. And the two rates are basically related from these simple relations. Now we use at this point a perturbative approach, which basically consists in considering the Alps field as a perturbation. So if we denote with delta rho a small perturbation from the equilibrium state, rho equ, we can write rho as the sum of rho equ plus delta rho. Now, the equilibrium state for photons is nothing but a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution because this is a thermal equilibrium. Well, we consider as the equilibrium state for uh, the alp field, the vacuum state, so we don't consider excitation in this case. Well, delta rho is a, a matrix which is defined in such a way that along the diagonal, we have the photons occupation number n gamma and the alps occupation number n a while the off-diagonal terms are just mixing terms. Uh, now, if we consider that the equilibrium collisions vanish, we can write again the kinetic equations in this form, introducing uh, uh, this G, and the G is uh, um, defined in terms of the total photon collision rate that we defined before. So, 
solving the kinetic equations, we can compute the all production. We computed the all production rate. In particular, concerning the TP alp conversion process, this process exhibits resonance when omega p is equal to ma. And the process is narrowly concentrated around this condition. We can approximate the all production rate with a delta function centered around the resonant condition omega p squared equal to m squared a, as we do here. And here we show the computed alp flux et arf from TP alp conversions in the solar magnetic field for three different regions, for two different uh, alp masses. In particular, for an alp mass of 10 EV, so a resonant production in the tackle line, and for MA equal to 130 EV, so resonant production in the radiative zone of the sun. But we also show a third flux for MA equal to zero, which is basically, um, which arises from uh, no resonant production uh, in the sun. And as you can see from the plot, this is a uh, highly suppressed with respect to the resonant ones. So we can just neglect it. And in this table, we show the computed flux parameters for uh, different alp masses. In the same way, we can compute. Uh, uh, we have computed the uh, alp production rate um, from uh, LP alp conversions. The process in this case uh, has a resonance for omega a equal to omega p, and again we can approximate the alp production rate with a delta function centered around the resonant condition. And um, also in this case, we do not consider the no resonant production since its contribution is negligible, as before. And here we show the computed alp flux etar from LP alp conversions. In particular, uh, the, the spectrum has a typical alp average energy of 0 0.13 kV. So this is a flux at uh, lower energy uh, with respect to the Primakov one. So let us now discuss some detection perspectives. Uh, concerning the alp flux from TP conversions and for an alp mass of approximately 10 eV, the flux is dominant at energy below the KV, as you, you can see from the plot. So below the castricial, which is this uh, black vertical line, and is uh, set at 2 KV. Now, Yaksu could have the uh, threshold in the sub KV region, but in this case, the currents uh, um, in the magnetic field of the cavity is completely lost for masses uh, larger than approximately 1 EV. There is a new project, uh, a school project, uh, currently under investigation, uh, which is Amelie, uh, which could be sensitive to ops with masses uh, from fused MEV to several EV. Um, concerning instead of flux for an alp mass of uh, 130 EV, now this will be much larger than the Primakov one. And in principle, a dark matter detector such as Core could cover the range of masses uh, less or similar than 100 dB. But in this case, there is a problem because uh, uh, there is a cosmological bound set by the primordial hydrogen ionization, GA gamma less or similar than five times 10 to the minus 13 GeV to the minus one, which seems to prevent the possibility of detecting these EV ops. But there is a but because uh, um, there are some cosmological models with low reheating temperature in which this bound can be easily evaded. And uh, our signal from the sun does not depend on the cosmological model. So um, the detection of such EV ops could point also towards you no know, standard cosmological scenario. Uh, concerning this study, alp flux from LP alp conversions, there is a recent work in which they suggest the possibility of detecting uh, this kind of alps through an upgraded version of YAXO, which could cover the energy range between 10 to the minus 2 kV and 10 to the minus 1 kV, and could have a sensitivity down to an alp mass of about 10 to the minus 2 eV. Finally, from the combination of uh, uh, helio seismology and solar neutrino observations, uh, we can constrain the solar alp luminosity, uh, which must be less than 0 0.03 times the solar luminosity. And in particular, using the luminosity associated with the alp flux for an alp mass of 100 dB, we set the new bound uh, G gamma less uh, than 3.8 11.5 times 10 to the minus 11 for uh, GeV to the minus one for an alp mass between 100 and 140 uh, M, uh, EV. 
you can see here. Now, our new bound is a comparable or actually even better than the one set by helium burning stars in globular clusters, which is shown in these plots by this uh, horizontal black line. And is a set at the 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus 11 GeV to the minus one. But an important point is that this is the best bound we can set from energy loss arguments in the sun. Uh, in the, indeed, if we consider the bound set by the Primakov effect in the sun, uh, this bound in this case at the four, uh, approximately four times 10 to the minus 10 GeV to the minus one in the same range of masses. Well, if we consider smaller values of MA, we obtain smaller luminosity and then less stringent constraints. So this is actually the best we can do from this, this work, this process. So in conclusion, we considered realistic models for the solar magnetic fields in the radiative zone and in the tachocline of the sun. We have characterized the resonant production of ALPS, both from transverse and longitudinal photon conversions in the solar magnetic fields. We have discussed the perspective of ALPS detection, a telescope experiments and dark matter detectors. And finally, we have set a new bound on G-gamma from energy loss arguments in the sun. Meanwhile, we are waiting for the actions to join our cast of particles. Thanks for the attention.